Hi guys, it's Satchel Mano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Today, I am here to talk to you about the new set of fragrances to come from Amouage, which are known as the Renaissance Collection, or Renaissance, as we say in the UK, I think. The era of Christopher Chong, who used to be the creative director, kind of owner guy of Amouage, is over. And a new gentleman has stepped up to the plate. plate. His name is Renor Salmon. Well, it might be Salmon, but it's written as the English word Salmon. And he, like any new manager or person of power in any company that I've ever experienced, wants to put their own stamp on what they're doing. So he has released four fragrances and they took nine months to develop. Three different perfumers made them and he has been very transparent about the fact that it is a departure from the usual opulence of Amouage, something that I'm a big fan of. So when I first tried these, I had that in my mind already. I thought, okay, I have to remember they're not gonna be like the typical Amouage fragrances that I like. I need to say thank you so much to Maddie who sent me these. I put a request out on my group to, to find out if anyone would be willing to sell me a sample or where I could find them, and she sent me the samples. So, Maddie, thank you so much. Mwah. So excited that I got to try them. So let's talk about them. Let's go. They're each inspired by real life places in Oman, and Renaissance, I always think of Italy when I think of the Renaissance, but what Renault wanted to do was create fragrances that are like something new being born, looking at something in a positive light and a different way. So it's a renaissance in that respect. He's an outdoorsy type person, so he goes mountain climbing, rock climbing, long walks, all of that stuff, up into the mountains of Muscat. And these are all, I guess, inspired by landscapes. That's where we're going. Love the colour scheme. I think the colour scheme of the bottles are amazing. I haven't seen them in person, but I've seen lots of pictures. You can kind of get the idea. I do own Amouage fragrances, so I know what their bottles look like in person. So I'm just going to smell them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about them in order of my least favourite to favourite. So, yeah. So the first one is called Enclave, and it's by a perfumer called Julien Raskiner. Quite an established perfumer. I'm not familiar with a lot of his things, but he did make Russian tea for Mask Milano and three of Naomi Goodsir's fragrances. Yeah, I like all of her perfumes. So Enclave is the turquoise kind of teal colour bottle and this one is about the fjords of Musandam. Masandum. Enclave sophisticatedly portrays the freshness trapped inside a rich earthy warm hideaway where land meets the sea. The notes are cardamom, spearmint, pink pepper, uh, cinnamon bark, rose patchouli, frankincense, vetiver, saffiano, amber extreme, and labdanum. So I'm going to spray them on my skin. I have got them on card here actually, but mm, don't like this one. <laughs> so Enclave, I'm going to spray it, but I've tried it a couple of times. Enclave opens to me, or Enclave if you want to pronounce it that way, opens very cool. And I don't mean cool like, hey, groovy dude. I mean, it's cool on the senses. You can really feel spearmint and cardamom here. Mainly spearmint though, and spearmint kind of stays all the way through the wear length. But because this has resins in it, to me, it feels like an aromatic oriental. It's kind of simple, I would say. It's not, I mean, none of these have, if you're an Amage fan, none of them have that papau that a lot of Amage fragrances have not talking about the secret garden collection that's something else but i mean their main line and the library collection as well but this one is a cool clean cool on the senses spearmint and cardamom and you can feel the resins underneath which is kind of nice i really like the opening of it but the reason this is my least favorite is because when it dries it somehow starts to smell like I don't know why, but it smells a bit like the Oud Accord, but it smells like everything an Oud perfume shouldn't be. I know that sounds really negative. Uh, the dry down is slightly richer. You still have whispers of the spearmint, but it feels like the, a combination of a couple of resins and things have created this woody, it's kind of typically Middle Eastern Oudy smell that's very gentle and subdued. But when you smell 
a really bad Middle Eastern brand. There are lots of them that are amazing, but then there are lots that are kind of very cheap and the oud feels a bit scratchy. So it's not exactly an oud perfume, but it has that feeling of, sometimes when you put myrrh with certain woods, it makes it feel like oud. And this has got labdanum amber. So it is, it is an, a, a cool green oriental smell, which is weird. And it definitely doesn't feel amouage a, a tiny bit, but not so much. I wouldn't say that I can smell cinnamon or rose in here. I kind of wish I did. It might bring a new facet to the fragrance, but for me, it's a spearmint that descends into a slightly too sweet, kind of woody, oody smell that is a little bit unpleasant to me. Not unpleasant, but it's just, I, I don't think I want to smell like that. But if you like fragrances from brands like Montel, or there's a brand called Al Rehab, a really super cheap Middle Eastern brand. Their Udi fragrances feel like this, so this was not a good start. There are some pleasant elements though. I like the brightness of the spearmint in it. It's not too kind of toothpaste smelling. It's kind of like a, a naturalistic spearmint smell. So that's nice, but the rest I don't like. Moving on, I'll revisit it because they're going on my skin so I can smell them a bit more when they're dry. The next one is called Meander and this one was made by Mackenzie Riley. She's a relatively new perfumer to the industry. She did make Mask Milano's new fragrance, which I really want to try. It's called Lost Alice. And she made a couple for La Bon Fire as well. So this one is the pastel green one. And in there's actually an interview with Renault uh, Salmon, Salmon on Fragrantica and he talks a little bit about each perfumer or he touches on a lot of different things so it's, it's pretty nice to find out a bit more. He mentioned that Mackenzie Riley's style is very minimalist so that's why he chose her for this perfume. For me, it's a bit too minimalist though. <laughs> so let me just read you a little bit about it. Meander explores the exhilarating feeling of happiness in a land of fog, lush green mountains and running streams. It is frankincense again, carrot, pink pepper and black pepper, oris, rose, cypriol, jonquil, frankincense in the base, vetiver and sandalwood. So to me, this is really all about sandalwood. Sandalwood is the main thing I smell here, which isn't a bad thing at all. It's a dry green sandalwood smell. So it, they do portray the greenery part. I wouldn't say it's fog or lush or dense or anything. It's a kind of an airy dry green smell. You can feel, I, when I first smelled it, I thought I was smelling cypress or something in the evergreen family done with a very light touch. And then when you realize that it's got cypriol in it, that's when, that's when the light bulb went off. Also, there's frankincense in the opening and in the base. And frankincense is a coniferous note. It does have greenery. It is a little bit foresty and limey when you smell it. But all of that is really overshadowed by a big sandalwood. And it's not a smooth, buttery, luscious, sultry sandalwood. It's quite a high-pitched, dry one. It feels kind of a little bit aromatic as well. It's very simple and everything's done with a light hand, so I can't stress enough. It's, they're nothing like the normal Amouage fragrances and I kind of went into it knowing that, so I wasn't so shocked. This one I think is, it's my sec, it's second from the bottom because it's not unique and it's not complex enough for me. Yes, it would be really nice in spring weather, or even winter, it kind of reminds me of a fir tree forest, but a very delicate one. A little bit peppery, but the pepper is just giving its aromatic thing as opposed to a spice. Yeah, I say some weird things, but that's just how I feel. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's masculine or feminine, and it's you know, obvious that two of the bottles look like their usual man fragrances and two women. I don't think any of these two that I've smelled lean either way. Yeah, I don't know. It, it smells a lot like cedarwood as well, which is probably what's putting me off of it because cedarwood is just so common. It's, it's a bit pencil shaving forest with sandalwood. There you go, that's how it smells. So let's talk about my two favorites. So the next one is called Ashore, and this one was also made by Mackenzie Riley. And this one I want to love so much more than I do, but something holds me back. Oh, 
Oh god, it is, it is actually really nice, it's just not enough. So it says, on the co coast of Raz al Jinns, I hope I've said that right, probably haven't. Midsummer, when the sun is in the middle of the sky, a shore depicts a mirage of the senses. It's pink pepper, cardamom, turmeric leaf oil, jasmine sandback absolute, and that is the winner here. Uh, solar accords and rose absolute, then you've got ambergris accord, Olibanum Hyper Absolute and Sandalwood Oil. A lot of the notes cross over. Um, maybe that was Renor saying like, these are the, the core things I want. Who knows, who knows what happens in those meetings and those discussions. But this is really beautiful if you like Jasmine. And what I like most about it is Sandback Jasmine is absolutely stunning. It's, to me, it's so much more interesting and beautiful than Jasminium Grandiflorum if I'm gonna get technical on your ass. But you know, the more common type of jasmine, French jasmine that you find in millions and millions of perfumes, Sandback jasmine isn't used this way quite so often. And it's kind of indolic. So there is a, a touch of something a bit eek when you smell it, but it works. It's a sunny, bright, slightly citrusy jasmine smell that I just wish was more full bodied. The jasmine is really beautiful. It's almost got a touch something savoury as well here. Oh, the jasmine is so wonderful though. I really, really like it. If you like Alien by Terry Mugler, that has got a sandback jasmine note as opposed to a just normal French kind of dry, dark jasmine. I can imagine if I sprayed a lot of this on in a beautiful sunny day, it would be absolutely beautiful. It's really nice now. I just, I feel like there's something missing from it. It feels a tiny bit incomplete, but then when you read that Mackenzie Riley's style is a bit, little bit minimalistic and stripped back, it makes sense. But if this one was made in the way of Christopher Chong's era, this would be an absolute winner. If it was, you know, much more full bodied and, and bold and complex, I feel like it's just there, but it's something's out of my reach but I really like it. It really just lets the Sandback Jasmine shine. It's, it's, it's such a wonderful note. It's, it's kind of like labdanum where it's so multifaceted anyway and roses as well, you know, there's, they can go in so many different directions. I've always said that Sandback Jasmine has, it, it feels so Indian. It feels like it's got wisps of incense running through it and I get all of that from this. And when they say solar notes, it's a weird thing to write but, or to put in a, a note list, but Solar notes are, to me are just something that's voluminous, sunshiny sort of smell and this definitely feels like a summery perfume and the Sandback Jasmine is tame in it. You can definitely feel it, but it's tame. So on to the last one, which is my favourite and Maddie, your favourite as well. So this is one you said you have a bottle of. It is Crimson Rocks. I love this one. This one is by far my favourite. So Crimson Rocks was made by Domiti Michelon Bertier. Uh, she made Flower Bomb, guys. She's a very established perfumer at IFF. She made Midnight in Paris for Van Cleef and Arpels. And this one is about the Al Hajar Mountains in Muscat, which is where Renault goes climbing, I believe. There's olive trees there. He said the colour of the rocks are red, so it's not Crimson Rocks, yeah. It's red rocks, basically. <laughs> there is juniper trees growing in the mountains as well. And the people there make rose water in a very unique way. They kind of, I think, kind of boil the petals over a fire and the rose water takes on this smoky nuance. So he wanted to showcase that. So this is the rose of the bunch. It says, for this fragrance, Amouage brought to life an intense rose, one that is resilient to withstand extreme weather, yet gentle. Um, texturing the rose are red notes of cinnamon, jujube honey accord, Oakwood, Cedarwood, and yeah, Al Jahar Mountains. So this one's really elegant. It's really, really pretty. And the opening is slightly unusual because it has this almost caramelized feeling. It feels to me like if you caramelized cinnamon a little bit, but don't think that it is gonna be a fireball, gumball kind of chewing gum cinnamon. It's very understated. But it, you can definitely feel that there's something cooked and a little bit brown roasted in it. That's the opening. The dry down part of it is the really, really beautiful part. I'll have to smell it on the card because right now we're in cooked cinnamon phase on my arm. 
Everything when this dries becomes a lot more tender and if you like Lyric by Amouage, this is a very different type of rose. It's not the same at all. Oh, it's really good. This has a kind of youthful, fruity type rose. Renault actually said in the interview that the roses that grow in these mountains are similar to Taif roses and Taif roses or Taif roses, which are Middle Eastern roses, they're super rich and fruity and hyper bouncy kind of smelling. And you can feel that in here, except that's at the core of it, except there is a gentle softness that blankets everything. And it's, it's almost like it's got violet in it as well. This one's decidedly feminine. It does feel like a feminine fragrance, but you know, you know, you guys know me, I, I don't care. I really don't care. This one feels like it could fit into the Secret Garden collection, but a little bit better than those because those ones are all soft and simple and very easily wearable. This one could be the rose that would fit into that collection, I think. You know, the Mimosa Love, Blossom Love, Lilac Love, those ones. This could be Rose Love if they released it as that, and I wouldn't know the difference except there is that little edge from the cooked thing, the smoked rose feeling. But overall, it's playful. It does have a slight lipsticky feeling without being iris. It's not that earthy iris makeup. It's got, but it's just got that something very tender going on in the rose department. <laughs> it's really, really beautiful, this one. Definitely my favorite of the bunch. So I will leave it there and I will sum up for you. I can accept that Renoir wants to take Amouage into a new place. He did hint at the fact that there is more to come, not necessarily this style. So if anyone's out there saying, oh God, Amouage are ruined, it's over. I think he has got plans for entirely different fragrances. He just wanted to do this one that was true to uh, Oman, which is where Amouage was birthed. And the fact that he's an outdoorsy person. But yeah, he wanted to do that. So what I was gonna say was, I can accept that new people that take over companies want to put their stamp and they wanna do new things and say, hey, look, the brand can actually create things like this. What I don't want to accept is that at least three of these fragrances are not worth the price that Amraj charges. I would love it if they dropped the price a little bit to accommodate for the way that they smell, but Amouage are a luxury brand and they would never do that because that would compromise their image and their integrity and la 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 la. So I think while Crimson Rocks is very beautiful and it would be the one that I would buy if I was gonna buy any, knowing how expensive Amouage fragrances are, I definitely wouldn't buy it for that. Uh, and the other three I could easily take or leave. They don't spark any kind of emotion or excitement in me when I smell them. I wasn't blown away. The Jasmine one, yeah, it's got something definitely beautiful. Crimson Rocks is the winner. Really, really nice. But just the fact that, yeah, the cost, that's it. If this was released under another brand for a slightly less price, you know, like maybe a hundred pounds, I would buy Crimson Rocks in a flash. But I think as a collection, yeah, they're cool. I get the theme, I get the idea, but I'm not really wowed or blown away by any means. Thank you so much, Maddie, for sending me these. I'm so glad I got to try them. I think I might wear Crimson Rocks today. Anyway, guys, I'm Atch Romano, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. I hope you like this video and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye. <laughs>